Are you always wondering what kind of questions you'll be asked during interviews? I'm gonna share three real life questions that you'll be asked and I'm gonna show you how to use the STAR interview method to prepare for them. This will boost your confidence and it'll help you ace the interview. The STAR method is a way to prepare for situational and behavioral based interview questions. STAR stands for situation, task, action, and result. So let's talk briefly about what each letter stands for and then I'm gonna share three of these situational based questions and show you how to answer them so that you stand out. If you're still with me, type in the comments section below and say, I'm going to ace the next interview. This will help you speak it into the atmosphere and write it down so you know it's gonna be true. So the S stands for situation. This is where you briefly describe a problem or situation that you've encountered. Be specific, but also be concise. Task is the specific thing that you want to accomplish or the goal that you set forth when you have this problem. The A stands for action. Here's where you'll spend the majority of your time when you're answering this type of question and give actionable steps that you took to resolve the issue. The R stands for result. Share two to three impressive results that happened as a result of the actions that you took. And you can also use this opportunity to share what you learned and how you grew. You're new to the school community. How do you intend on building relationships with families, students, and promote your school counseling program if hired? Coming in as a new school counselor, I'm aware that it takes time to build relationships with students and families. I did something similar during my internship. My goal was to find creative ways to meet the needs of students and families and introduce myself. Knowing that there's already a counselor on campus and has already established relationships with those stakeholders. Coming in, I shared a presentation with students during a counseling lesson and shared who I am and how I plan on helping the counselor already on campus. At the end, we played a Kahoot where we talked about the roles of a counselor and how I'm going to assist her. During open house, I met with families and I showed them the same presentation and I shared ways that they can get in contact with me and how I plan on supporting the counselor and students. So after building relationships with students and then meeting them in the hallways and greeting them, students began coming to my office and feeling more comfortable speaking with me individually and in small groups. And families started reaching out to me to share concerns that they had and how I can assist their students. I learned that building relationships was one of the most important parts of being a counselor. You're on your way to a counseling lesson and the nurse stops you in the hall and says a student has just arrived on campus and has bruises on him. What would you do? I had a counseling lesson scheduled with a teacher and it was her only time to get a break. As a counselor, I'm aware that sometimes you'll be pulled in more than one direction and sometimes situations arise out of nowhere. I had to find a way to make sure that I meet the needs of this student and give my teacher a break. Thankfully, I wasn't the only counselor on campus at the time, so I reached out to my co-counselor and asked if she could help meet with the student just to get the ball rolling. This would give me time to go complete the lesson with the teacher that I had planned and then give me an opportunity to check in with the student afterwards and assess the situation and contact the appropriate authorities, CPS, the families, depending on the situation and what was involved. So after completing my school counseling lesson, I met with a student. He told me that he and his friend were playing a little too roughly at recess the day before and the friend hit him and bruised him in the arm. I met with this other student just to make sure that the stories matched and it was confirmed that yes, that did happen. So I referred this situation to my assistant principal and I let him contact the families of the offender and I called the victim's parents just to inform them what happened. Then I met with both boys and we talked about safety. They agreed to play in a way that was safe but also fun. I've been asked this question or something similar to this in every interview that I've been on. They're listening to see how you can multitask how you can delegate and reach out for support when you need it. So this is a very common interview question and if you've been asked this during an interview, type yes in the comments section below. Please give an example of a difficult situation that you had with a teacher or a family and how did you resolve the situation? A teacher was constantly removing a student from the classroom. She said the student was disruptive, not following directions, and argumentative. I had to find a way to help the student remain in the classroom, complete her work, and feel comfortable being in an environment while also making sure that the teacher felt supported. The first thing that I did was observe the student in the natural environment in the classroom. So I was taking note of the things that I observed as far as interactions between the teacher, I was looking at the assignments that they were being expected to do, and I was also looking at the rules and procedures in the whole classroom environment. After I had the observation, I sat down with the student and we created three very simple behavior goals that the student agreed to. 
Then I met with the teacher and I shared those same behavior goals and the teacher agreed to initial a daily check-in sheet with that student. I saw significant changes in that environment. The teacher was happy and the student was happy and thriving and it was just a really positive experience. At the end, I encouraged the teacher to call home and make the family aware of the behavior changes that was going on so that also improved the relationship with the student and the teacher. Are you looking to get hired for your first job as a school counselor? Or are you a veteran counselor looking to transfer to another school? Well, I have a resource for you. Get your copy of my new e-guide, Ace Your Interview, Insider Tips for Landing Your School Counseling Job. When you get your copy, this is what you can look forward to to help you on your job search. You'll get a virtual portfolio template. When you go on interviews, one way to stand out among candidates is submitting a virtual portfolio. I've already made a template for you and you'll get your own copy that you can edit. I even show you how to edit it and customize it to fit you. You'll also get copies of email templates. When you reach out to a principal about a job, you can introduce yourself, so I give you an email template for that. After your interview, it's a great idea to send a thank you letter, and I give you a template for that too. Additionally, I share tough interview questions that you're more than likely going to be asked. I even tell you how to answer those using a specific method that's going to be concise, but also showcase your skills, expertise, and knowledge. And of course, I show you an example of how to answer these difficult questions. When you download your copy, I suggest you print it because you can make notes, highlight, and answer some of the questions that'll be asked so that you can be prepared for your next interview. Check out the table of contents and so you can get a good idea of what's in this guide. I'll walk you through every step of the interview process, including preparing for the interview, answering difficult questions, creating a portfolio, and then what to do and consider after the interview is over. To get your copy, go to counselingwithmrv.com.